Good evening, Trinity. This is Jennifer coming to you for evening prayer on the evening of Thursday, January the 14th, and we're honoring Bishop William Laud today. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O oh, gracious light. O oh, gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O oh, Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Our psalm appointed today is part of Psalm 18, and it begins with verse 21. The Lord rewarded me because of my righteous dealing. Because my hands were clean, he rewarded me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not offended against my God. For all his judgments are before my eyes, and his decrees I have not put away from me. For I have been blameless with him and have kept myself from iniquity. Therefore the Lord rewarded me according to my righteous dealing, because of the cleanness of my hands in his sight. With the faithful you show yourself faithful, O God. With the forthright you show yourself forthright. With the pure you show yourself pure. But with the crooked you are wily. You will save a lowly people but you will humble the haughty eyes. You, O oh Lord, are my lamp. My God, you make my darkness bright. With you, I will break down an enclosure. With the help of my God, I will scale any wall. As for God, his ways are perfect. The words of the Lord are tried in the fire. He is a shield to all who trust in him. For who is God? But the Lord, who is the rock except our God? It is God who girds me about with strength and makes my way secure. He makes me sure-footed like a deer and lets me stand firm on the heights. He trains my hands for battle and my arms for bending even a bow of bronze. You have given me your shield of victory. Your right hand also sustains me. Your loving care makes me great. You lengthen my stride beneath me and my ankles do not give way. I pursue my enemies and overtake them. I will not turn back till I have destroyed them. I strike them down and they cannot rise. They fall defeated at my feet. You have girded me with the strength for battle. You have cast down my adversaries beneath me. You have put my enemies to flight. I destroy those who hate me. They cry out, but there is none to help them. They cry to the Lord, but he does not answer. I beat them small like dust before the wind. I trample them like mud in the streets. You deliver me from the strife of the peoples. You put me at the head of the nations. A people I have not known shall serve me. No sooner shall they hear than they shall obey me. Strangers will cringe before me. The foreign peoples will lose heart. They shall come trembling out of their strongholds. The Lord lives. Blessed is my rock. Exalted is the God of my salvation. He is the God who gave me victory and cast down the peoples beneath me. You rescued me from the fury of my enemies. You exalted me above those who rose against me. You saved me from my deadly foe. Therefore, I will extol you among the nations, O Lord, and sing praises to your name. 
he multiplies the victories of his king. He shows loving kindness to his anointed, to David and his descendants forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our lesson today comes from Mark chapter 2. When he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around there. There was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door. And he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves, and he said to them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up and take your mat and walk? But so that you may know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them. So they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. The Song of Mary My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. William Laud, who was born in 1573, was Archbishop of Canterbury from 1633 to 1645 in the days of King Charles I. It was a turbulent time throughout, one of violent divisions in the Church of England, eventually culminating in the English Civil War. An example is the surplus com controversy. We have all encountered Christians who are opposed to celebrating Christmas on the grounds that A, the Bible nowhere commands us to celebrate Christmas and does not mention the 25th of December, and B, the pagans had a festival in December at which they built fires and feasted and exchanged gifts, from which it follows that those who celebrate Christmas are participating in pagan rites. Similarly, in the late 1500s and early 1600s, there were Christians in England who objected to the garment called the surplice. When participating in the services of morning and evening prayer in church, clergy, including choir members, normally wore a cassock, a black, floor-length, fairly tight-fitting garment, covered by a surplice, a white, knee-length, fairly loose garment with loose sleeves. The Puritans objected to the surplice, A, as not mentioned in the Bible, and B, as something that the Roman Catholics had worn before the Reformation, which made it one of the props of idolatrous worship and mar marked anyone who wore it as an idolater. Archbishop Laud regarded it as a seemingly dignified garment, an appropriate response to the Apostle Paul's injunction, let all things be done decently and in order. The Puritans stood by their objections and violently interrupted services at which the surplice was worn. 
On one occasion, a group of Puritans broke into an Oxford chapel the night before a service and stole the surpluses, which they threw into a dung pit of a privy. Again, a woman marched into Lickfield Cathedral, accompanied by the town clerk and his wife, and ruined the altar hangings with a bucket of pitch. Under English law, it was part of Laud's office as archbishop to maintain order and to punish offenses against the peace of the church. He made it his practice to proceed not only against poor and obscure offenders, but also, perhaps especially, against rich and powerful ones. It is well that men should be equal before the law, but his integrity on this point ultimately cost Laud his life. Laud was also the prosecutor of record in the trials of those who published seditious or violent and abusive attacks on the doctrine and discipline of the church, and the Puritans produced an abundance of scurrilous attacks on those who disagreed with them, which were duly punished, with Laud taking the responsibility. In 1630, before Laud became archbishop, when Alexander Lighton published Zion's Pleas Against Prelacy, a violent attack on the bishops as tools of antichrist, he was sentenced to be publicly whipped and branded and have his ears cut off. He was 60 years old and a doctor of divinity, and the sentence aroused great public indignation. It is not certain that it was actually carried out. <clears throat> and the very last piece about Laud, so in 1637, an attempt was made to introduce the Book of Common Prayer into general use in Scotland, and it immediately caused rioting. In February of 1638, Scottish leaders signed the National Covenant by which they pledged themselves to uphold the Puritan position by force, and by the end of the year they had voted to depose and excommunicate every bishop in Scotland. The unrest spread to England, and in 1640, Laud was arrested on a charge of high treason. He was kept in the tower for four years and tried in 1644 at the age of 71. He was found guilty, not because there was any evidence of his guilt, but because the House of Commons was determined that he should die. On the scaffold, he prayed, the Lord receive my soul and have mercy on me and bless this kingdom with peace and charity that there may be not this effusion of Christian blood amongst them. The Apostles' Creed I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. We entreat you, O Lord, that your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. We entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of William and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord, 
Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us for evening prayer, and may your evening be holy, good, and peaceful.